or I can talk to you so you feel like you have somebody to talk to while people join the room. <laughs> All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome. As everyone's coming in, please go into chat and share where you're from. We love seeing where everyone is joining us from. <clears throat> Wow, Tiffany, we have some people from North Carolina, New York, San Antonio, Tennessee. Great. Arkansas, New Mexico, South Florida, California. Wow. Wow, that's a nice group of people from a lot of different areas. Fabulous. Right, well, we're just gonna let everyone um, get in and start getting settled. So just a couple of housekeeping things. First off, everyone is on mute as you're coming in. That's just to cut down on the background noise, but we still want it to be very interactive. So please feel free, use your chat, talk to us. Um, Tiffany has someone here, Sean, who's gonna be helping her with your questions and making sure that everyone gets everything answered. Also, we are going to be recording the session today. It will be available early next week on michaels.com backslash classes. All right, so thank you everyone for coming with us to help us celebrate National Creativity Day. Wanted to make sure that everyone was aware that we will be donating a dollar to Boys and Girls Club COVID Relief Fund for everyone that has joined the class today. So thank you very much. We really appreciate this. And we're so happy to have Tiffany Smith from Wilton with us. And today she's going to spend some time with us and share her passion for cake decorating. Welcome, thank Tiffany. Thank you, Debbie. And thanks to all of you for joining me on National Creativity Day. I'm really excited to be here to introduce you to the fun world of fondant. Debbie, if you can just switch my camera for me. I just want to show everyone what we are going to be making today. So how fun does this look? So this cake is actually iced in buttercream, but all of the decorations you see, they're created out of fondant. And what's really cool about this design is even if you have never worked with um, fondant before or you've never decorated cakes, believe it or not, this is easy enough that with what we're going to go through in the next 45 minutes to an hour, um, and as long as you've got the right tools, you should feel pretty comfortable creating this at home on your own. So I'm going to be taking you through all of the techniques that I use to create all of the, the sea life. Um, but first, I just want to kind of give you an overview of fondant in case you've never worked with it before. Before. Um, fondant is a lot like modeling clay or play-doh you can roll it you can um, mold it you can cut it um, you can use molds or just mold it with your hands so it's it's really easy to work with but fondant is so much better because after you make whatever fun thing you want to make with it you can then eat it you can't do that with modeling clay right <laughs> Um, so just a, a few things that I want to go over that I think um, will be helpful for those of you that maybe have never worked with it. First of all, um, fondant can actually be made from scratch if you want. Um, but quite honestly, I am all about convenience and I prefer the ready to use fondant. This is available at Michael's. This is sort of a standard package. It's a 24 ounce box. Um, it's available in white or you can get it pre-colored. Uh, it comes in a larger five pound box for big projects and it also comes in small four ounce packages um, that are sort of like a large candy bar size. Um, you can actually um, flavor it if you want. All of the, the fondant is vanilla flavor with the exception of the pre-colored uh, brown. That's actually chocolate. And if you like Tootsie Roll, you would love this chocolate fondant because it tastes a lot like a Tootsie Roll. Um, so um, 
Next, I just want to go over some of the tools that you're going to need and just some, some little hints that I think you'll find helpful when you're working with fondant. First of all, um, when you get started, you want to make sure that your hands are super clean. Uh, we should all have super clean hands these days anyways with the, the pandemic, right? <laughs> but when you're handling fondant, any traces of dirt or lint, it's going to find its way into your fondant. So clean hands, a clean surface. Um, Debbie, if you could just switch my camera. I just want to show everyone I am using what's called a um, roll and cut mat. This is available at Michael's. Um, it's got a nice nonstick surface. Um, so it's, it's going to be great for cutting. If you can't get your hands on a roll and cut mat, you could use a large um, silicone mat or a large cutting board. This is just really nice because it really cleans up easy and then you just roll it up and you can tuck it away in, in a cupboard. You're also going to want to make sure that you have some kind of a rolling pin. Um, this is actually, you know, much smaller than your standard rolling pin. Um, this is great for small fondant projects because um, it, it just, it, it's good for little hands too. So any kids out there, this is really a great size for you. You could use a standard size rolling pin if you wanted to, but what's great about the fondant roller is that you have these little guide rings on here. They come off very easily. Um, when you're rolling out fondant, depending on what technique you want to use, there are certain thicknesses that you, you need to um, make sure you, you have for whatever technique you're using. So these guide rings will help you achieve that perfect thickness. The green one um, will help you get a thicker fondant piece, and then the, the pink ones will help you get it a lot thinner, almost paper thin. So if you have these, you don't have to worry about messing with a ruler and trying to measure the height of your fondant once you've rolled it. This just makes it a lot easier. Um, something else about fondant is um, it, it, it tends to start to stick to whatever it comes in contact with, especially after you've been working with it for a while. So for any of you that are bakers and, and maybe you've worked with um, cookie dough and you, you go to roll it out, what do you do first? You have to dust your surface with flour, right? Well, fondant is sort of the same way, but instead of dusting the surface with um, with flour, you're going to dust it with either cornstarch or powdered sugar. Either one will work, um, but you just want a very light dusting because if you add too much powder to your uh, your fondant, it's going to start to dry out. So this is um, a dust and store pouch. I'll show you how it works. You just unscrew the top. And then you'll put your cornstarch or your powder, um, powdered sugar inside, screw the top back on, Oops. and then this gray rim unscrews, and voila, there's your little dusting pouch, and you just tap it on your surface, and the perfect amount comes out. Now, if for some reason you can't get your hands on a dust and store pouch, I'm going to show you a little trick here. You could take a fresh handy wipe. This has got to be one right out of the package, not one that you've used before. You could take some cornstarch or powdered sugar, put it in the center, wrap up your corners like this, and then put a rubber band around it. And this will work in a pinch. It's not gonna come out quite as fine as the dust and store pouch though. So ideally, this is really the, the best way to go. Um, something else about fondant is um, sometimes it can dry out. So you're gonna wanna make sure you have some uh, pure white solid vegetable shortening. You don't need very much, probably only like a tablespoon or two. And there's a couple reasons this is gonna come in handy when you're working with fondant. Um, first of all, sometimes when you go to roll out your fondant, it can be a little dry. So you're not gonna wanna dust your surface in that case with any kind of powder. You would instead just take 
your two fingers and kind of put a, a very thin layer of shortening on your surface, and that will prevent the sticking as well. Um, it's also going to help stretch your fondant as you're rolling it. The other need for shortening is when you're all done working with your fondant, if you have any left over, you don't want to just get rid of it because as long as you store it properly, you can reuse it. So what you would do is you would uh, roll your fondant in a ball. So I've got a ball. It's currently wrapped in, in plastic, but pretend the plastic's not on here. You would just take some shortening with your fingers and just rub it over the ball. You don't want to knead it in. Just kind of coat the outside of your ball, and that's going to help seal in the moisture so your fondant doesn't dry out while it's being stored. Um, and then once you've got that layer of shortening on, you'll wrap it tight in plastic wrap and then put it in either like a resealable bag like this, or you could put it in a airtight container. Um, I have had people say that they freeze their fondant. Personally, I don't freeze mine because I tend to use up my fondant so fast that I never have a need to, to freeze it for any length of time. But um, you know, I, I think it's good for a good three to six months in the freezer if you just want to leave it out and you put that thin layer of shortening on it and, you know, put it in an airtight container or a baggie, you should have a good shelf life of a couple of months. Um, and eventually it'll start to, to dry out, but you'll know when you go to, to knead it if it's too dry to work with and you need to start with a fresh batch. Something else that you're going to want to make sure you have is um, something to cut your fondant with. So this is actually a fondant trimmer available at Michael's. It looks a lot like a pizza cutter or a pastry wheel, right? This is a lot better to use, though, because you've got two wheels and you can just um, take what pop one off and put the other one on depending on, you know, what you need to cut. So this is good for thicker amounts of fondant, um, more like straight lines, whereas the smaller wheel that I have on is good for what we're going to be doing today. It's good if you need to cut um, corners. It's going to be a lot easier to do it with the smaller wheel than the larger wheel. Um, if you are using white fondant and you want to add color to your project, you're going to want some icing colors. We're going to talk more about this in a bit. And then you're also going to need a bunch of toothpicks because that's actually how we're going to apply the, the color from the jar into our fondant. You're also going to want to make sure that you have um, a couple of decorator brushes. And yes, these look like paint brushes. However, um, you don't want to be just grabbing your art supply brushes. You want to make sure that you have food safe brushes. So you can find these at Michael's in the food crafting aisle. Um, this is actually from a set of five brushes in different sizes. It's real important that you don't use those art supply brushes that have come into contact with paint. Um, and you always want to kind of designate these for just your food crafting. Mm -hmm. So we'll be using one of these just to brush off excess cornstarch or, or powdered sugar from our fondant pieces. The other one we're going to use to, um, to help adhere uh, the, the decorations to the cake. Tiffany, could you hold those brushes closer to the mat so that uh, people I, I can get a better view of them? Sure can. There you go. Yeah. And then can you tell everybody about the mat you're using? Um, the mat is a non-stick mat. It's called a um, roll and cut mat. This too is available at Michael's. Okay. Okay. Great. Right. And, and then... Oh, go ahead. I just had one other question. You talked about storing your fondant. You just, we just store that at room temperature. We don't need to store that once you, you seal it in the bag. That gets stored at room temperature, not in the fridge, right? Correct. You can just keep it at room temperature. That's fine. Great. Yep. For those of you that really want to get heavy into fondant, I would recommend also getting this nine-piece fondant and gum paste toolkit. Um, there's a lot of tools in here that I think you'll find you're going to be grabbing with almost every project you do. We're going to be using a couple things out of here today, the tweezers and the little spatula. And then finally, 
Um, a, a tool that does not come in that kit is a modeling stick. I know this looks a lot like a pencil, but you never want to use a pencil with your fondant projects. <laughs> um, so this actually comes in a two pack at Michael's. There's this thin stick and then there's one that's a little bit thicker, more the, the width of a pencil. Okay, so I think next what we will do is I'm going to show you how we can color our, the fondant. So um, what this is, is just some pink um, icing color. This is a little bit different from the grocery store squeeze bottle food colors because this is a gel. Um, those squeeze bottles are, are liquid and you really want to be careful adding liquid to your fondant because it is going to change the consistency a little bit, it's going to get a little stickier and then it gets harder to work with. So that's why I like to use the gel. Um, this you also can use to color your buttercream or royal icing. You could even use this um, gel color to put into your cake batter. Um, if you want to add some color to like a vanilla cake, say you're making a graduation cake and you want to do the school colors, you could do one layer in, you know, one of the school colors and the other layer in another school color. So um, this paste has a lot of uses. So I'm just taking some white fondant here. You always want to knead it first. And you'll notice I just put gloves on. I, I like to use the gloves just when I am um, adding color to my fondant because if you get this, um, this color on your hands, directly on your hands, it's going to stain a little bit. I mean, it does come out with soap and water, but it might take a couple of days for it to completely wash out. So I'm just taking a toothpick and adding the color. And we're just going to start kneading that in. You just kind of stretch it and fold it and stretch it and fold it and twist it. And Tiffany, just, uh -huh. Tiffany a quick question for you. Is this sure. when you would want to add some flavor if you wanted to flavor your fondant? You could add some flavor to your fondant. You could use um, whatever kind of extract that you want to use, or you could use the, the candy flavors. But again, with that liquid, you just want to be careful that you're not adding too much. Typically with an extract or those candy flavor oils, um, they're highly concentrated, so you shouldn't need more than a drop. Um, so yeah, you could need that in when you're also doing the color. So that's a, a pretty good color. Now, if I wanted to get this a little brighter or darker, you want to make sure that you're taking a fresh toothpick because that one that we used before, even though it might not look like it, there are traces of um, fondant on that toothpick and you don't want to stick that back in your jar because then you're going to contaminate the icing color in the jar. Um, as long as you're constantly using fresh toothpicks, this should have a shelf life of about 24 months. It, it lasts pretty long. So now that we've got our um, pink fondant, what we are going to do next is we are going to make this piece of coral. So I'll show you how to do that. I'm taking my modeling stick here. Um, I want my dusting pouch handy too because we want to just kind of dust the end of this. I'm using the, the round end. There's the pointed end or the round end. You could probably use either one. Um, I'm just going to use the round end and just start poking holes in here until it's covered in holes. And it really doesn't, go ahead. I was just going to say, and what happens if you're working with fondant and you don't like the way it looks? <laughs> well, you could just eat it and grab another piece. <laughs> <laughs> you squish it up and start um, over. That's yeah, the best part. Yeah, you can just squish it up and, and start over. Exactly. So this is really all there is to it to create, I don't know if you can see that, um, right here. I believe that this type of coral is called brain coral. I will tell you all, I am not a marine biologist. I am a cake decorator. So any of you that did well in biology, if I don't have the correct terminology here for my, my sea life, 
um, please chime in in the chat and let us know. So that looks pretty good. So we'll set that aside to put on our cake later. And next what we are going to do is I am going to show you how to do the mermaid tail right here. Um, if you notice, that is like standing up pretty straight. So what I did to get it to stand up, because fondant, I'll show you from this, you know, once you make it pretty thin, it really doesn't stand up. It starts wilting. Can you see how it just kind of wilts? So we want that to be able to stand up on its own. So what I did um, ahead of time was I added some Gumtex Tylos powder to the fondant. I just took a pinch and kneaded it into the fondant. This is edible. You can find it at Michael's in the food crafting aisle. It really doesn't change the taste of your fondant, but it's going to help to um, have your fondant hold its shape when it dries. So what we're going to do is I am going to show you kind of another coloring technique to use when we um, make our mermaid tail here. So I have a dark and a light piece of um, fondant and I am just going to roll them into logs. And then to get a marbling effect, you can kind of just twist them, sort of like a rope, and then fold it and twist it again. And then I'll show you what happens. I'll roll it out just so you can kind of get the effect here. So you kind of get a, a marble effect. So we're actually going to use this for our, our mermaid tail. And um, I've got here a silicone sea life mold. This is also available at Michael's. There's like three or four different designs. There's a, um, a nautical one, and I believe there's a jewelry one. So um, they're really cool if you're planning some kind of a, a themed party. Whenever you go to use the silicone mold, you want to make sure that you uh, give it a, a light dusting first. So I'm just going to dust that up a little bit and then we're going to put the fondant in here you kind of want to form it actually I'm probably not even going to need that much um, kind of form it in the same shape as the cavity I'm going to prop this up so hopefully you guys can see it a little better Is that better um, and then to get it in the tail part you can actually use your fondant roller and just kind of push it into the cavity. Once it's all in there, we want to get rid of that excess. So I'm going to take my little spatula from the, um, the toolkit, and we're just going to scrape the excess off. And you, you kind of want to hold your fingers down on the fondant um, so it doesn't pull out of the cavity. We just want to get the excess away here. And then once you get most of it gone, you can just kind of push it in with your fingers. Once it's all in there, to get it out of the mold, it removes pretty easily. Just gonna flip it over and kind of curl over the corner and it pops right out. And you can see, look at how cool that marble effect is. So you'll notice when I go to hold this up, it, it kind of flops over, right? Well, with that Gumtex Tylos powder in there, if we just set this aside for a couple of hours to dry, it will dry hard enough that it's going to stand up like the topper on, actually, I can show you this cupcake here. So this cupcake has the, gum, the, um, the Gumtex in it. 
So this dried sort of hard, so it's gonna stay up on its own. Another little trick I can show you here is um, to get sort of some, some dimension to the tail. Can you see how that one sort of has the tail um, sort of waving a little bit compared to this one that's just straight? To get that dimension, if you just take a little piece of paper towel or, or tissue and just kind of stuff it under it, it's going to dry that way. So I can show you with the one I have here. Tiffany, why do you have a stick in one of the tails? Uh, I'm going to get to that in just Ooh. a second. That's my other little secret. Uh -oh, so if I... we just let that dry like that, you'll get that curl to the tail. Um, so the stick, the purpose of the stick is on the cake, I really don't have a lot of icing. So that tail is so um, narrow that it's not really gonna stand up on its own. If I go to move the cake, it would fall over, right? So we wanna give it a little support. In the cupcake, you really don't need that stick because it has enough icing that I can stick it into, um, into the icing and it's, it's gonna hold. So what I actually use, believe it or not, is a piece of uncooked spaghetti. You could use a toothpick, however, um, I really don't like to use toothpicks. There's always that chance of a, a choking hazard. Um, so if you just break off a piece of uncooked spaghetti and then you would insert it into your fondant piece and you want to do this right after you've molded it because again with that gum text in there it's going to start to dry hard so you got to get the stick in before it starts to dry and you don't have to push it up too much you know just just a little bit so it it'll support it um you could also for a larger topper uh, you know, the, the more fondant you use, the heavier it's going to be. So you could also use a lollipop stick or a cookie stick. So here's a lollipop stick. If this was wider, we could put that in. Um, and that's going to be less of a, a choking hazard than a, a toothpick. Okay. Um, and I just wanted to show you with that marbling effect, here are some fish that I added some white to the orange and then this guy right here is just all orange and look at what a difference it looks a little more lifelike when you add those multiple colors to each of your pieces tiffany are those molded from the the other cavities in the mold you were using they are yep there's um there's an octopus there's a starfish, there's a seashell. Um, I'm not exactly sure what this coral is called. Maybe someone can help us out in the chat. And then there's a, a big wave here as well and a, a seahorse. Yeah, and if you're not into sea life, we have several different um, mold themes available all in the Michaels assortment. We pretty much have a, a mold for every party and cake thing you could come up with. So uh, take a look for your favorite thing <laughs> and the molds work the same no matter what your cake is about. Right. So what I want to show you next is how I did the, the seaweed. So here and standing up here, we are just going to take some green fondant. So you don't need that much. Um, you always want to knead it first before you try to roll it out. Just gonna dust the surface a little bit. And I'm actually gonna take these gloves off now that I'm done coloring. It's just a little easier to work without them. And Tiffany, one of the best parts of fondant, I know when I use it, is you can make all this stuff ahead of time, right? You don't have to worry about doing it right before you're, you're exactly. decorating your cake. Exactly. So yeah, the, the cake that I made um, for, for today's sample, I actually was able to put that together in about an hour because 
I'm looking for my other ring here, um, because I had all the pieces made ahead of time. Uh, my fondant was colored ahead of time. So it's really easy, um, you know, w working with fondant that you can do everything in advance. So I'm just rolling this out. You want to go pretty thin. If you have the guide rings, you would use the pink ones now. Um, you want like a, a sixteenth of an inch. So it's almost paper thin here. And then I'm just going to take the, um, the, the trimmer here and I'm just going to kind of just do some wavy cuts. I'm going to get rid of that end one. Um, and, and I'm just kind of going pretty thin. I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch. It's yeah. hard to say. Yeah. Tiffany, if you were making these in advance for your cake, how would you store them until you were ready to decorate? Um, you could just, once they're dry, you could just store them in a, in a container. Um, if you're not going to use the, the gum text, um, I would say don't put a lid on it because you, you want it exposed to air so they'll dry a little bit they're just going to be a little easier to to handle. Great. So you get the idea. You kind of just want to to cut different lengths. Um, they can be, you know, different widths too. And then what you can do to kind of get this um, effect that, I think you can see some of these, that they're kind of um, sort of waving in, in the water. What you want to do is kind of arrange them as soon as you cut them. So you kind of just twist them into, you know, different shapes. So you could make these ahead of time and let them dry. If you're not using the gum text, you probably need to let them dry for a good 24 hours. Um, if it's humid where you are, they might not even completely dry enough to handle, but that's okay. I've um, got a couple that I can show you how to attach them to your cake, even when they're still flimsy like this. I have a whole bunch made up ahead of time that have completely dried and um, you know, they, they stand up pretty straight here. So one other thing I want to show you before we start assembling the cake, um, one other kind of coral is these little tubular guys. I'm not even sure what they're, they're called. I think it's just tubular coral. So the way we're going to make that is I'm just going to take a little piece. And this I'm just going to sort of roll into a log. Um, it's, it's pretty thin. I would say like thinner than, thinner than a Tootsie Roll for sure. Um, for those of you familiar with like the Mike and Ike candy, I guess, maybe it's, it's about that thickness. And then I'm just going to take the modeling tool and poke the center. You don't have to stick the stick all the way in. You kind of just want it to appear like it's, it's hollow all the way through. And so that's all there is to that. And then if you get like three or four of these, I've actually got some more made up here. Hopefully they haven't started to dry yet. You can actually just kind of squeeze them together in a clump and then they're going to be easier to put on your cake. And as long as they haven't started to dry, you don't even need any kind of an adhesive. If you just kind of press them together a little bit, they're going to stay together like a clump. And then you can just kind of put them on your cake. Um, I don't know if you can see on one of these guys, there's just a little trace of cornstarch, and this is where that dry decorator brush will really help, just to kind of brush some of that off. Once in a while, I get lazy and I don't want to grab my brush. I just try to brush it off with my finger, and it doesn't seem to come off as well. So that's why you really want that, mm -hmm. that decorator brush. 
Tiffany, we had someone chime in that said uh, the tubular coral is called crinoids. Um, and she said oh. that's what they call the fossils of those corals. So we do have someone who knows a thing or two. And we are getting, several, quest we are getting several questions about the cake itself. Um, Tiffany's cake is in buttercream. And when she goes to decorate it, she'll explain to everybody how she decorated uh, her cake. Yeah, and we're actually ready to get to that right now. So what I have here is a cake that I've already iced in buttercream. Um, you can actually buy uh, ready-to-use buttercream right at Michael's. It comes in two different sizes. Um, or you can make your buttercream from scratch. We actually have a recipe on Wilton.com if you're interested in making your own. Um, and then you'll notice that I kind of have two different colors here. The way I did that is I just took that icing color, I took the navy blue, and I um, just tinted some darker and, and some lighter. And then I just took a spatula and put some of the dark on the, the bottom half, and then the light I piled on top and kind of just started taking my spatula and pushing it down until it meets about halfway. Once the whole cake is covered, then I took a larger spatula here and just kind of went around um, and, and smoothed it out. And, you know, I took some time to make my icing really smooth. You do not have to go through all that trouble. If you kind of just want to, you know, push it on and have spatula tracks in it, that is totally okay. It's really just going to look more you know, wavy like the ocean. So don't feel like you have to mess with it to get it to look like this. You don't even have to use the two tones of blue. If you just wanna keep it simple and use one color, that is perfectly fine. So what we're gonna do first here is we're gonna put some sand around the bottom before we start adding our fondant pieces. So um, I've got some brown sugar, that's what we're gonna be using for the sand. And then to apply the sand, I'm gonna be using some piping gel. This is available at Michael's as well. Um, it's just a clear gel. You could add color to it if you wanted to. This is kind of what it looks like. Um, and actually, if you add blue color to this, it looks just like water. So if you ever want to do, you know, some kind of a, an ocean effect on the cake surface, you could always use this colored blue and it really looks like, like water. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my spatula and I'm just going to take piping gel and just put it around the bottom here. Um, and this is what's going to help the, uh, the brown sugar to stick to the base. Um, you can also just use buttercream icing if you want, if you don't want to do the piping gel. I would suggest if you're going to do the buttercream that you try to color it um, a light brown sort of to match the brown sugar and then it's not going to show through so much. It'll kind of just blend in. Um, I don't think I'm going to go all the way around the cake. I think you guys can get the idea here. So then I am going to apply the brown sugar with a fork. Um, for those of you that bake, you might know that brown sugar can get a little chunky. So I just like the fork to kind of break it up a little bit if it starts to pack down. And I just kind of sprinkle it on my base here like this. Okay, Tiffany, just getting some questions. Um, people sure. love what you've done with your cake. Um, we did get a question on dairy-free icing. There are lots of recipes on, on Wilton.com or if you follow any, you know, special websites with, you know, special, um, you know, recipes for, uh, for buttercream, but actually our buttercream recipe uses Crisco, not butter. So that is dairy free and you can use water instead of milk as your liquid. So there are a lot of ways to make a, um, a dairy free buttercream icing. Um, and yeah, and then also people are wondering about, you know, if you covered the cake completely in fondant, does it change at all how you would attach the decorations? 
Um, if, if the cake was covered in fondant and I attached the decorations, no, you would still attach them the same way. So okay. if, if this was a freshly iced buttercream cake, we could actually just go and attach most of the pieces and they would stay adhered to the cake. Okay. Except this, I actually iced several hours ago, so it's, it's kind of dry to the touch. So we are going to need something to help adhere the pieces. And I'm going to show you, you've got a couple of options. If this was a fondant covered cake, you could just take a damp, um, a damp decorator brush and um, put some water on the back of your fondant piece, let's say I was going to attach this, this starfish, um, you would just dampen the back and then you could stick it right on to your fondant covered cake. Fresh fondant against fresh fondant, all you need is a little water and it'll stick fine. Um, if the fondant covered cake has dried, or in the case of the dried buttercream, we have to use a little bit more in order for it to, to stay. So we have a couple of options. You can use, um, I've got some buttercream in a uh, disposable decorating bag. These are available at Michael's too. And then if you, you don't need to even put a tip inside your bag, you can just snip the end off and, and you don't need a very big hole. I mean, it's, it's pretty small. Um, and then we can just add a little dab of icing to our pieces and adhere them. Um, you can also use piping gel, which is what I'm going to use for my really thin uh, pieces here. So like, oh, and see that one just kind of broke. Um, so something this thin, trying to put icing on the back of it, when you go to apply this to the cake, some of the icing might kind of scoot out the sides of the piece, and then it's going to show. So I like to use piping gel for these really thin pieces. Um, so I'm just going to take a little, and it, it doesn't take much, you know, just some of the wider parts of this piece of coral. Just add some piping gel, and then it can just stick right on. So I like to put all of these, um, these pieces of coral on first, and then I add some of the other things. I'll add one more. I just wanted to chime in. Someone was saying they don't have any fondant, but they would love to try this. So I just wanted to add a tip while Tiffany is doing that. Um, our fondant molds work great with frozen buttercream. So what you can do is you can just spread buttercream into those molds, make sure they're filled, and then you can freeze it. And then after the buttercream is solid, you can pop out the frozen buttercream decorations and attach those to your cake. And then they'll yep. soften um, in time to serve it. And then everybody can eat that as additional icing on their cake. So um, the fondant molds are really, really versatile and a great way to add decorations to your cake, no matter what mediums you have on hand. Absolutely. Okay, so now that I've got these guys on, I like to add my, um, my brain coral next. So this is where um, I'll show you how to use the icing bag. So I'm just going to put a little icing there, and we'll kind of put that right at the base there. There we, we have go. another question about fondant. Fondant does sure. not have egg in it, but every if it's pre if you're making it yourself, you would definitely be able to make it without eggs because there is no egg in fondant. However, allergen statements on manufactured fondant have to do with the um, cleanliness, not the cleanliness, but the cross contamination possibilities of a facility. So it would depend on whether the facility could say that it was an eggless environment. So if you're buying pre made fondant, just check the box for an allergen statement. But you could absolutely make it um, yourself because there is no eggs in a fondant recipe. I'm just going to add a little more brown sugar and then I'll show you how I'm going to add the seaweed and um, that tubular coral. Okay. Turn this around. 
And see, when these are in clumps like this, it just makes it so much easier to just set them on. And then we can add some of the seaweed. I have some already made up here. Um, and this is where I like to use the uh, piping gel instead. I kind of just fill in here. That can kind of stick right into the cake. I'll show you how you can take a piece of fresh seaweed if you didn't want to put the gum tax in it or give this time to dry. See how it's still kind of flimsy? Um, just take some piping gel, put it on the back. All right, everybody is loving your decorations, Tiffany. Oh, great. I think I have, I have, we already have some Father's Day cakes that are going to look like uh, under the sea theme. So hopefully dad likes the ocean. <laughs> so I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but I've kind of just arranged it. So okay. it just has a little more dimension. So you, like I right. said, you don't necessarily have to let those dry first. Um, you can just put them on like that. I just find it's so much easier to put these on if I've got the gum text in there. We'll add a little more over here and then I'll show you how to stick the toppers in. Uh, we've got to put a fish on, of course. So for that, I'm just going to put a little piping gel on the back. We'll stick him on there. Oh, he's super cute, Tiffany. <laughs> and then I like to take the, the starfish and the shells and um, kind of put them wherever I want to like cover something up. Um, and they don't even necessarily have to be glued down. I mean, they'll pretty much stay on their own. We'll put one over here. And I actually added, I don't know if you guys can see that really good on, on camera or not, but I, I started with an ivory color fondant and just mixed in a little bit of brown, kind of how we marbled the mermaid tail. I did the same thing with the shells. It just helps it look a little more lifelike. Um, one other thing I want to add before I put the topper on. So these are sugar pearls. Um, they're just a type of sprinkle. They really look like pearls. And I'm just going to take the tweezers from the fondant kit, and we are going to give our fish a few bubbles. So I'm just going to put some piping gel there, and hopefully I can do this. Oh, that went a little too deep. I'm trying to do it from from overhead here. Um, let me try another one. There we go, that one's a little better. So you can add a few <clears throat> sugar pearls for bubbles. Um, and next what we will do is add the toppers. So I like to position the toppers and then add the sand around it. So I'm gonna just stick this guy in here and this guy next to him. And we'll take our mermaid, put her there. Tiffany, any advice you'd give? For, we got a lot of beginners watching it who've never worked with fondant before. Any advice on, on someone who might be a little apprehensive about using it for the first time? Um, 
you know what? Don't worry about the cake to start. Just grab a box of fondant and start playing with it. If you've ever played with Play-Doh or modeling clay, it's really no different other than if you don't like what you created, you can then just go ahead and eat it and, and start over. <laughs> so I, I think you'll be amazed at how easy it is to work with. I, I know the cake design can look sort of intimidating, um, but you know, when you break it apart and look at how I did each piece, it's really um, not that difficult with the right tools. Um, so now I'm just gonna add some seaweed and this, these can kind of just stick right in the cake. Um, they don't need those little sticks like um, the, the, um, the spaghetti like I put on the other pieces. I think you get the idea. And then I would go back and add some sand on top. And I don't even bother with the piping gel here. Um, you know, unless you're, you're gonna tip your cake over, the, the brown sugar should really kind of just stay on its own. Um, just don't put it in front of a powerful fan because the, the, the fan could blow the brown sugar off but I kind of just fill in around the top with a little sand and then then I add the rest of my shells to kind of fill in wherever I think we need something a little more. And there we go. So what other Fantastic. questions do we have? Yeah, one question that just came up on is using uh, crushed graham crackers instead of uh, brown sugar for the um, sand. And I bet that would work just sure. great, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, you right. might even be able to use like those Nilla wafers too. Oh, I that's would a great say. idea. Yeah. 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 See here, now, now Tiffany, we can clearly see on your cake, your, your very um, expertly placed fish bubbles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're just kind of tricky for me trying to yeah. do it overhead here, but yeah, um, yeah they make perfect bubbles. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so Tiffany, we did get a question on if you can make your own fondant. Um, I think you touched on that at the beginning, right? When you make fondant, it's usually a little bit softer. Yeah, and you know, I'll be honest with you, I've been decorating for over 20 years, and do you know that I have only ever made my own fondant once? And guess when that was? It was a few weeks ago when my Michael store was <laughs> not open yet for curbside pickup and I needed fondant. So I had no choice but to make it from scratch. And I'll tell you, I just, I, I don't know why people would want to make it from scratch because it's just so much easier to grab a box of the ready mm -hmm. to use fondant. Um, yeah. And there's less mess to clean up if, if sure. you use this. And it's just a, a much better consistency to work with the ready to use fondant, I personally think. Yeah, and I'll add, I know a lot of people, you know, they are, Wilton's fondant is, is vanilla and it's meant to be a very bland flavor. But what I like to do is I make a really great flavored buttercream and I put that under my fondant and then it really makes the fondant um, flavor taste great. We mm -hmm. did get a question on the crunch value. I love that question, the crunch value of the dried fondant. So if somebody wanted to eat one of those little, you know, kids like to eat everything. Um, what does it taste like when you bite it? How crunchy is it like compared to like a sugar decoration? Good question. So the the pieces that have the gum text in them, um, they do dry pretty hard. I, I don't know that they're really going to crunch, um, but you're definitely going to notice a difference compared to if you didn't put the gum text into it. You know, as fondant um, sits, you know, uncovered, it is going to start to dry out a little bit, but it never gets mm -hmm. completely hard unless you put the, the gum text in it. So we, we did get a lot of them, but I, I wouldn't recommend eating the hard pieces. Um, but the, the other pieces that don't have the gum text, or if you cover a cake in fondant, when you go to cut into it, it never really gets hard. I feel like it's more of 
sort of like a, I don't want to say chewy texture. But I, would, I was going to say chewy. That's what I would say. Yeah. <laughs> we, you know, it's, we're getting a lot of, <laughs> can you go over the gum text again and explain? I know you just added a little bit. I think there's a, like a recipe, like the number of, like based on the, the ounces of fondant you're using, you need about a quarter teaspoon of the powder. But we, we did get a lot of questions on the gum text. Yeah, you know, I, I'm not even sure of the, the precise amount. I can tell you that if you have, say, um, a, a size of um, fondant, maybe about like a golf ball, all you need is a pinch. So if you don't know what a pinch is, I would say about an eighth of a teaspoon. Okay. It doesn't take a lot at all. Um, in, in fact, if you put too much, it's going to start to change the texture a little bit. Wonderful. And then just your cake, is that a two-layer uh, two eight-inch round? It is, yep. I mean, you could also, you know, do something a little smaller if you want. Let me show you this cupcake. Again, if, if you're a little nervous about trying to decorate a whole cake, here's just a, a cupcake that I did. Um, I just took a, a 1M star tip and just put a swirl of icing. And then I took a couple of the, um, the things that I molded and stuck those in, added some brown sugar, and threw on some of the the pearls and look at how super quick and easy that is if, if you're afraid to tackle this this is a great way to start just topping some fondant pieces on your cupcakes that's great and one last question I want to cover a lot of people are asking I answered a few of them um, if you could use other kinds of mold other than the silicone fondant molds the answer is yes um, it just depends on how flexible they are and that determines how easy it is to get the fondant out right Right, right. Yeah, the, the silicone molds are, are definitely the easiest to try to get your pieces out. I would say if you're going to use any other kind of mold, it's going to be real important to dust it first with that powdered sugar or cornstarch. Okay, and then, okay, we'll take this as the last question because I know we're up on time here. What would be the process for attaching fondant on a candy apple? Like if you wanted to put it over caramel, I think you would just kind of make sure it's not hot and it would stick, right? Yeah. Um, I don't think I've ever tried that. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say that you probably want to let the caramel set a little bit because, you know, the fondant's going to be a little bit heavy. So if the caramel was freshly put on the apple, I I'd be afraid that the mm -hmm. fondant might eventually slide off. But I think once the caramel starts to set, you could probably just adhere it um, or just wait until it completely sets. And then I would take a little piping gel um, and apply it to the back of the fondant piece and do just like we did on, on the cake. Great. Wonderful. Well, you're getting lots of, of cheers and applause, Tiffany. Everybody loves your cake. Oh, great. And Any other questions? Yeah, we already want to know, they already want to know when your next class is. So we'll, we'll be working with Michaels on, um, on bringing more of this great fondant instruction and cake decorating tips and tricks for everybody. We're so glad you could join us today. Yes, so that's a great segue. So I just wanted to say um, what a beautiful cake. And honestly, you made it look so easy and gave such great detailed instructions that I may even go and try to make one. <laughs> Fabulous. So, <laughs> Thank you so much, Tiffany. Thank you so much, Sean, and overall to Wilton. And thank you for each of you for joining us today. Um, don't forget that the recording will be available at the beginning of um, this coming week on michaels.com backslash classes. So you'll be able to go in, watch it again, pause it, slow it down any place you need, and just make a cake along with her. But we do hope to see you very soon again, and hopefully we can have Tiffany back soon, and she can teach us some more of how to work with fondant. Yeah, and I just want to thank Michaels for giving me the opportunity to share my project today. It was a lot of fun. Um, I encourage you guys to run off and, and take your fondant and have fun with it. Um, you know, don't feel like you have to do exactly what I did. Um, come up with your own ideas, make it your own, and uh, whatever you decide to create this weekend, I wish you sweet success with it, and I hope to see you back here again soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone.